Hey guys, welcome back to Professional Weekenders YouTube channel. Today we're here in Dunedin, Florida, and today we're going to walk around downtown Dunedin and see what it has to offer. So make sure you stick around, check it out, hit that subscribe button, and let's go. Let's go. All right, y'all, like we said, we're here in Dunedin, just north of Clearwater. Uh, this is actually typically where we launch our jet ski. So whenever we talk about the, the Dunedin Causeway, that's just a little... No ways little, down the road here. That way. Yeah, so uh, super cute area. So we're going to walk around, get some ice cream, get some dinner, and uh, see what we can see. So let's go. I got my orange bird shirt on <laughs> because we are actually in town Dunedin today. It's really, I mean, it's just, far, just outside of Tampa. It's not very far. Mm -hmm. But we're here today because this was supposed to be the Dunedin... Uh, Orange Festival. Mm -hmm. The websites say it is, uh, but apparently they canceled it and they didn't bother to tell anybody. <laughs> it, it, it says it was advertised on St. Pete News. It was advertised in Tampa Bay Times. Yeah, things to do this weekend. Yeah, I'm like, oh, let's go. And yeah, and good. it was supposed to happen at Edgewater Park directly behind me, and it is empty. Yeah. So not all is lost though, because Dunedin is a really neat, interesting cute little town here yeah. that we've been meaning to do a video on anyways mm -hmm. yeah. so since we're here we're gonna go ahead and do that video today and walk around the downtown area do a little bit of window shopping make sure we get some ice cream and get some dinner mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, we'll let you know what we think about is downtown Dunedin Florida's hidden gem on the Gulf Coast so stick around to find out you gotta love the artsy kind of thing here with the crosswalk and the fish herringbone a lot of traffic here in Dunedin a lot of cars, a lot of tourists. It's definitely a place that people come to visit. Don't stop in the middle of the road to try to shoot a YouTube video. Anyways, they got this really cool marina here with all kinds of fishing charters, private day cruises and ships you can take out. This one will even take you dolphin sightseeing and it's got a gigantic slide that drops you about six feet into the water. When we first moved to Florida, this was one of the first like little town experiences that we had. We came down here. Mm -hmm. Really great thing about this is right here from this marina, from this dock, it's a fantastic place to watch the sunset. It was a beautiful sunset. Highly recommend coming back for sunset. I don't know if we're going to make it here that late tonight. If so, we'll get some footage of that, but it is a great place to come watch sunset. So here at the end of the dock, they do have the best Western. She's got a nice little bar area, and it's also where you can pick up the ferry water taxi down to Clearwater. So Clearwater Beach is just a couple miles down the intercoastal here, uh, and that's a really neat place to hang out too. So if you're in this area, if you're staying in Dunedin, if you're staying at this Best Western, um, you can hop a little ferry and go down and visit Clearwater and get two beach towns for the price of one. Boop! <laughs> too short. Correction, this is Bon Appetit restaurant. Looks pretty nice. Waterfront dining. So now we've made it to the end of the dock and the end of the pier. I don't know. This Forma. is the intercoastal waterway that goes right by here. And right back there is uh, Honeymoon, Honeymoon Island and the Dunedin Causeway. So if you don't know, we have a separate YouTube channel called Weekenders on the Water where we go around and ride our jet skis all over the place. Dunedin Causeway is the main place where a lot of those adventures take place. Oh That's goodness. right there. So we've rocketed by here a number of times in the channel. I feel bad for the people that have their boats tied up here because you can see the wake coming in from some of the other boats that have passed by. And these docks are rocking. Now we're going to head to downtown Dunedin, which is right down the street here. As you can see, Dunedin is quite extensive. There's a lot going on here. You get all kinds of different shopping and food and all kinds of recreational activities, all kinds of different stuff. We are primarily going to focus here. So we're right here right now at the end of Main Street. Primarily going to focus on Main Street. That's where most of it is. But you can see you could spend quite a bit of time exploring the entire area. And here is the empty Edgewater Park where the festival is supposed to take place. And additionally, I would admit it is really nice that they have so many public restrooms and that they clearly mark them as well. You don't have to scrounge around looking like you do in New York City or something. And already we've come across our first little shop. You may think D&G, Dolce & Gabbana. No, this is Dunedin Gallery. What did you just say? Did you just say Dolce & Gabbana? Yeah. Oh my God. Dolce & Gabbana, duh. Uh <laughs> Oh, tons of little 
shops here to do your window shopping. A fan. Air conditioning. <laughs> that's that's how she does her that. shopping. So we're at Broadway and Main. This is like the main intersection in the old uh, Dunedin, and you're standing in the grass. Well, I'm doing it because I got to get you in frame if okay, you're going to talk. So we're going to walk that way and see what we can see. Okay. All right. Here is the visitor center. This is where we're told that the uh, Orange Festival is not happening this weekend. The uh, man there did not seem to have a ton of information though. No, just said it wasn't happening. Hey, you can hop on the Jolly Trolley. I think that's free. We'll have to see. Yeah, so I'm not sure if the Jolly Trolley is free or if they charge for that, but maybe we'll ride it on the way back. And this place has caught my eye here. Strachan, stretch hands. How do you think you say that? Strachan. Stretch hands? No, there's no D. Strachan. Strachan's. All right, so Strachan's homemade ice cream and desserts. I think it's going to be dessert later on after dinner tonight because I'm a sucker for homemade ice cream. I mean, you can smell it out here on the street. That uh, homemade ice cream with the cream and the vanilla, super pungent and flavorful, even just walking by. So as you can see on that side of the road, they got a couple of restaurants as well as a few bars, pubs, night nightlife. Uh, and when you've had enough to drink, you can get some pizza over here at Tony's. And one thing to mention too, is Dunedin is probably the most dog friendly city in all of Florida. It's not uncommon at all to see people walking around here with their dogs and even taking them into restaurants. There's plenty of places that, uh, plenty of businesses around here that accept dogs. Um, so hope you're not allergic to dogs if you want to come here. But if you've got a four-legged friend, uh, you can pretty much bring them darn near anywhere in this town. They're all pretty welcoming. And as you can see, they love their dogs around here. Another neat thing about Dunedin is the Pinellas Trail goes right through here. You know, I could be wrong, but I think the Pinellas Trail actually goes uh, coast to coast through Florida too. So I don't know, it goes pretty far. I've never ridden it, never ridden the whole way, but definitely a very popular thing to do in this part of town. If you come, you know, rent some bikes, get some e-bikes, bring your own bikes, you could have a pretty good time. So there you have it. Nobody confirmed the facts. So we're at the Dunedin History Museum uh, and they close in 20 minutes. So we're gonna check it out. All right, you can get some uh, Dunedin socks. Look at that. Ticket prices there are, what, five bucks? It's my understanding the Pinellas Trail used to be a railroad, right? That's correct, yeah. And now they turned it into a bike path and it goes that way. So the Dunedin, the Dunedin Museum here does look pretty neat. I'm sure it's got a lot of history about the local area. Unfortunately, we just don't quite have time today, seeing as how they're gonna close in 20 minutes. Uh, probably usually can't record in museums anyways, which is why we don't do a ton of those on the channel. Uh, but it is here, it's a great option if you're gonna wander around downtown looking for something to do. And as Chris, Christine mentioned here, the Pinellas Trail, Trail used to be a railroad, uh, which is why they have this caboose or boxcar lemonade stand. It is a hot one today and Christine needs something to cool down, so we're gonna get some lemonade. Are you talking smack? Oh, we'll good. We'll do I, I, not too sweet, but cold and refreshing. Let's do it. I just tried Lewis's. Yeah. Oh. What else, what other flavors do you have? I mean, I don't, I too sour? Know. Yeah, I, I drank too fast. So, I think it's pretty decent. It's, uh, it's definitely not very sweet. Definitely a little bit more on the sour side. But yeah, cold, refreshing. That's uh, it's an interesting orange. It's not like, like, yeah, like she said, not sweet. I think I like the limeade better. So another quaint thing about Dunedin is this, this is at least the second mini library that we've seen. Interesting thing, interesting thing that I've heard about these mini libraries is that sometimes people will set them up just so that way they can create Poke Stops in Pokemon Go. And her orange aid is almost gone, quick. That's interesting. I'm really sad that it's over. It went quick. Yeah. We, we didn't even make it a half a block yet. I was really thirsty. <laughs> so that's when we were in Dunedin, and this was a couple years ago. Uh, we actually ate at this Mexican food place, and it was pretty good. And I think they do like some after hours kind of things too. So if you are in town, check it out. Casa Tina. Yeah. They got a donkey out front. Yeah. And now we've come to Pioneer Park. This is an alternative location for the Orange Festival. Although it looks quite a bit smaller than Edgewater Park. So some years they have the Orange Festival here at Pioneer Park. Some years it's at or Edgewater Park. And some years it gets canceled without telling anybody. <laughs> so in case you didn't know, Dunedin is actually named after Dunedin, Scotland. So this is a place where a lot of Scottish immigrants had founded and stayed at one time. So they've got all these little Scottish, you know, throwbacks here. 
right. and Christine has gone Christine has gone full on Scottish and found herself a little kilt you want to do a jig and there you go that's what you get from her and of course no visit to a small town would be complete without stopping by the local realty firm and what did you find out as far as property prices go expensive yeah so it looks like uh house prices are fairly normal off the off the golf but if you want ocean front or golf front you're looking at probably about one and a half mil for a small less than two thousand square foot house uh and of course that goes up i found a beautiful one for three mil it's um about six thousand square feet that's one way to fix your fountain when it stops working yeah. see from this side it looks perfect all right so we have made it to the end of the main part of main street you see the business is starting to come to an end and this is where we're going to have dinner tonight this is the living room heard a lot of nice things about this place let's go inside and check it out so super quaint super cute super cool you get these vintage chairs. Alright guys, so I got the lampshade burger with Brussels sprouts. And then it's got the KFC wings with some fries. So dinner at the living room was pretty good. Really enjoyed our food. The chicken wings were tasty, the truffle fries, I think you liked your burger. Yeah, my favorite thing was my Brussels sprouts, so. Okay. And it was fairly affordable. They do include uh, gratuities included in the in the check, which is actually kind of nice. I kind of prefer it that way. Mm -hmm. um, I'll but, do math. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, I think Overall, dinner for us came to just over 50 bucks, so not too bad. Get a little right. uh, date night spot. Yeah. So now we're going to head on back down Main Street. We're going to go get that ice cream we were talking about. Oh, boy. Let's go. Let's go. Did some research, found out that Jolly, the Jolly Trolley is it's like 250 225 one way. So affordable, but not the cheapest. And it's not too bad if you're going like Dunedin to Clearwater or something, but we're just going a couple blocks. So we're going to walk it. There's a dog in that golf cart. As you can see, golf carts are in fashion here in Dunedin, as well as puppy dogs. And just like that, we're back to where the ice cream was. You excited? Very excited. I just want a small ice cream. Oh, there's on the bottom, too. Yeah. I know I said I'm going to get a small. This is what two scoops looks like. This is two big scoops. I, I, I know. I thought it would be two... I thought it would be half the size. Okay. That's two scoops. That's two scoops? This is two scoops. That's a lot. Yes. So we got the uh, chocolate Oreo and the strawberry cheesecake. Chocolate Oreo is really good. Strawberry cheesecake is good too. All right, and mine is the Boston, which is like it's a it's milkshake milk and ice cream. Mm -hmm. it right there? There's a vanilla custard milkshake. Mm -hmm. The ice cream you get to choose, so I went with cookie dough ice cream. And they put a topping on top of it too, so it's also got caramel on top. This thing is decadent. Very good. Oh. It looks amazing and it looks huge. Yeah, it's just leaking all over the place. <laughs> it's a messy. Like you said the caramel on top of it was hot, so. Oh, okay. That's yeah. why it's melting That's so fast. Melting yeah. Faster, yeah. So we just wrapped up our dessert here. The Boston milkshake with the giant scoop of ice cream in it was delicious. It was so good. So much ice cream, though. Tons of ice cream. You didn't even offer me a single taste. Yeah, we got to talking. We mm -hmm. met some new subscribers there and had a good time. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, I'm sorry you didn't offer me to taste your ice cream either. I was I was waiting for you. I don't know. Not oh. not a sing, not a single taste. Anyways, you know how it is. I never meet a stranger, mm -hmm. so got to talking. Mm -hmm. Forgot about it. But the ice cream was really good. Really recommend this. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna head on down the street. I think that's probably gonna be about it for us today. Yeah. All right, guys. Let's wrap up our time here at the good old Dunedin's. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. I have a great time. Highly recommend you all checking out the area. And I actually can see ourselves living here. I love where we live in Tampa, but this Danina is so quaint. Very you know? cute. Yeah. Thank you. So, all right, guys, so here is uh, this guy with pro tips. All right, guys, so here are your pro tips for visiting Dunedin. I would say number one is if you're coming here to shop, make sure you get here early. Things start closing up the streets around 5-ish. The bars and the restaurants are going to stay open a little bit later, but shopping is pretty much done by 5. Pro tip number two is definitely bring your dog. We didn't bring our dog because our dog does not do well out in public, but if your dog does, Dunedin's a great dog-friendly city. Pro tip number three is if you're coming here for the Orange Festival, make sure you triple check the dates. <laughs> Call it. We did, we cross-referenced and yeah. still got it wrong somehow. Call the Chamber of Commerce, talk to the visitor center, ask them if they're having uh, 
Orange Festival today, so. That way you don't show up when it's not an Orange Festival and wearing your orange bird <laughs> shirt and then look like an idiot when they don't have orange stuff. Yeah. We're gonna be found some oranges. And I don't, I don't, I don't get the whole Orange Festival thing, which is kind of why we we're gonna check it out anyways, because, mm. just side note here, they, um, oranges are in season in like December. Mm. I don't and know And they don't grow in Dunedin. Yeah, I don't know why we're having Orange Festival in, July. Usually when they have these festivals is at the end of the growing season so that way they can get rid of all the extra crop that they have. I don't know what they're doing with oranges in July. But go figure. That's going to do it for today guys. Remember to hit that subscribe button. Really appreciate it. Really help us out. And with that being said, we're out of here and we will see you next weekend. Bye. Call, call, yeah, the, Chamber call the Chamber of Congress. You can... Commerce, not Congress. Why are they calling the chamber of The uh, intersections of Broadway and Maine. Over again. Mm, are you ready this time? Yeah. Okay. So I didn't know you were going to talk. I didn't know you were going to talk. Okay. All right. It's super hot because this is like a laundry facility mm -hmm. and it's, I'm being exhausted right now. Well, hurry up. All right. I'm going to get run over. We're at the Dunedin History Museum. Right, start again. Okay. It's very interesting. It's very interesting that the Penny Alice Trail used Pinellas. Pinellas. <laughs> Alright, so just wrapped up our dessert here. Sorry, sorry, it's hard to talk again. I was like, no, my okay. shirt. Alright. So, this is the Mexican food place. Uh, they do. So, right behind me is the place uh, where. What am I trying to say? It's the Mexican place we ate the last time we were in town. Okay. Alright, so dinner at the living. Oh. What? You gonna look at the camera? Oh, okay. Alright. We'll talk about liberty like that. Just a good dummy. She's a good dog, but she's just not, she's a bit of a mess. She's a lot to handle out in public. Mm. It's definitely an indoor dog. Mm -hmm. Too hot. And pro tip number three is if you're coming. <laughs> All right.